congratulations to both of you. Fantastic film. I really, really enjoyed it. Right. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Thank no you. problem. Um, so you've you've both collaborated like uh, collaborated with each other quite a lot. Why do you think it works? It's best not to go into it too much. Really, no, it works because no. it works, and uh, hopefully yeah. it'll work for the next one if. If that ever happens, <laughs> it's a general sense of disrespect, isn't it? <laughs> In general, taking the piss, taking yes. the Mickey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. So, how how did Jimmy's Hall come about? How did the story come about? Um, a, a wonderful friend called Donald O'Kelly, who's a, an Irish writer and actor, um, first told me about Jimmy Grant, and when I heard about the the fact that he had built the hall with all his mates with their own hands, that this man had travelled the world and brought everything he'd seen back to that little hall where they debated and thought and it was a place to, you know, have you know there was there was intellectual pursuits, but there was also boxing for the kids and painting the things that we see in the film and great music, and um, so the, the, that hall itself became a character, you know, and it just meant something more than just that physical space, and it was probably one of the few free spaces in the whole country of Ireland which had which had turned into kind of a theological gulag, where the church and the state controlled everything. So we thought there was, it was just bursting with ideas and we, we should try and find a way to do it. Fantastic. Um, so <clears throat> when you're writing a character like Jimmy, obviously there wasn't very much known about him. <clears throat> How do you go about doing something like that? Do you, do you feel a sort of certain responsibility to portray him in a certain way? Well, we try and see the man in the round. First of all, we've got to be truthful to the historical, the historical facts that we know. And there was a great deal of public events that we knew about, about the hall, when Jimmy came back, what date, you know, where he lived, what happened to the hall, what happened to him at the end of the film, which is very, very important. Uh, but all the very subtle things that you need for a good story, you know, about the inner life, the motivations, you know, that, that very delicate fabric uh, between between characters and, and, and friends and the mix of personalities, well, we'll have to invent that. So we sat down and talked about it and how, and what we did was try to be truthful to the background, the real historical background, and then create, use our imagination with that to come up with characters that seem to make sense to us all. Fantastic. And, and Ken, what, what drew you to the story, particularly about Jimmy? Obviously you've, you visit these characters quite often, these sort of yeah. underdogs that are, that are sort of fighting against mm. the establishment. Well, um, I mean, Jim is a was an extraordinary man. Obviously, um, I mean, he was he was not only deeply political in his bones, in in his search for a, a just society, uh, and his understanding of the class conflicts within that society. But he had a great sense of fun. I mean, to fight the rich and powerful with a gramophone and jazz <laughs> is great, isn't it? I mean, it's subversive. It's you know, it's it's putting a smile on people's faces, and at the same time drawing them together. To, to gather their strength and to, to so that they, they can put a tenant back who's been and his family have been evicted from their houses by a rich landlord and then go and dance. You know, I mean what a guy and what a community to have established. But then the combined power of the church who wants to control education and the rich and powerful who want to control the land and the property. Their combination, you know, screwed him, but but what a fight he put up! Absolutely, and um, actually, I've noticed particularly the last couple of films, mm. uh, Looking for Eric, Angel Share, and Jimmy's mm -hmm. Hall, they all have a certain <coughs> sense of fun about them. I remember mm -hmm. when Angel Share came out, and everyone was like, "I was laughing, it was funny," <laughs> which which uh, surprised people quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you do you find that? Perhaps you're a bit more hopeful, maybe, than, than you were. Yeah. I mean, the, it thing. makes me think people haven't seen those incredible <laughs> scenes in Kess, or, I mean, riff raff, I laugh my head the whole way through it. So I'm not sure how that stereotype really holds up. I think some of the films in the past, there's been tragic moments to them, but there's also been a, a sense of fun and, and, and mischief through many of the films. And then, of course, right in the middle of all that was a very, very tough film called Root Irish, because it was about traumatised men coming back from the war. Um, and you know that, that really wasn't the place where we were cracking jokes all the time. So I think you have to just be truthful to the premise. But I think through many of the films even before I was making, there's a great sense of mischief and fun of them. I mean, in case that football scene, I mean, it's an absolute classic. Yeah, but, yeah. And 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 the the, the hope, yeah. the hope comes in people's determination to resist. You know, they they'll always kick back, really. And I mean, even now we're, we're just after the election, we're we'll talking about the far right being on the margin and the fascists and neo-fascists and 
racists and and their apologists uh, coming into power, or, or at least getting a high vote, not coming into power. But but alongside that, you've got parties in like in Greece, you know, very strong party mm. for for social justice and for the interests of the people. Mm. In Spain, there's a new party of the left getting powerful. In Ireland, well, the yeah. left did well. Mm. So. You know, there is hope. People will fight back, and and in the films we've done, I think that's that that's the the hope is that there is always a sense of resistance. Absolutely, and and the youth actually in this film, particularly, yeah, with yeah. The, the priest yeah. who yeah. Father Seamus, who suddenly thought to himself, well, he kind of had the you know he had the balls, as it were, to be able to speak. And say, yes, yes, he spoke up. Mind you, Father Seamus would still close the hall. I mean, he's, you know, he's the clever tactician. He's much more subtle. Yeah. Much more subtle, just mm. as dangerous. Mm. But but it, it's it's the kids, really, uh, you know, who, who wanted the hall opened and who mm. come at the end to um, to make certain they're the last, they make contact with Jimmy. Um, I mean, they're the ones you, you carry, who yeah. carry the hope. And it's funny as well, just when you're talking about the elections there and the, the new reality after the vote, there was a party in Spain Four months ago, it didn't exist. Called Podemos, we can, and they ended up with one million two hundred thousand votes, with five seats at the European elections. Now that all comes out from the anger of young people in Spain, who have got seen with no future whatsoever. Um, these are people who have got degrees, who have studied, you know, and just look ahead, and, and they cannot find work. And if they do, it's the most basic work, and they've had to leave their own country. I think in Edinburgh just now, they reckon there's between twenty and thirty thousand well-trained Spaniards. You know, have had to leave their own country. So I think there's a fury in people saying this system does not work, and we want to try and address an economy and say that let's build an economy around need and not greed. And that's exactly what Jimmy was trying to do way back in the twenties and thirties. And don't forget, he's a person who lived through the Roaring Twenties. He saw the depression in 1929, and then absolute crisis of massive unemployment. You know, terrible poverty and hunger. You know, and there's 19 million unemployed just now in Europe too. So there's a lot of people saying. No, we don't accept that you've just written our lives off. We, we don't accept we can't have a full life. And they're saying we must change things. You know, but the great, the, I mean, the great danger, of course, is the writer telling lies and blaming everything on immigrants, which is absolutely stupid and base and crude. But when you have the papers um, supporting that, when you have Farage and all his gang in the National Front blaming immigrants, blaming immigrants all the time, you know, and that poisonous... Um, that, that poison spreads. I mean, it creates very, very dangerous times. And that was what was interesting too when we spoke to people in mm-hmm. Cannes. The ones who really understood what a safe space to meet and talk were the ones who were in Greece and in Turkey and places where the far right were on the march. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Just just one final question, yeah. actually. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> obviously, there's been a lot said about is this your last film and everything. Mm-hmm. You can see over the years that your, your films have gone from, you know, you're making films for, for television and then you have sort of films in the 90s like Riff Raff. Raining Stones, Lady Bird, Lady Bird, they were on a smaller scale and it sort of got bigger. Why not just make more smaller films afterwards? <laughs> well, yeah. So then I you mean, can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's a suggestion more than anything. Well, it, uh, thank you. I'll, um, I'll take note of that, what you <laughs> say. And, uh, um, well, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a thought. I mean, even, even small ones, you've, you've still got to... You've got to put this... This, the same amount of... It needs emotional energy, like, for 12, 14 hours a day, really. When you know, like some old codgers are just <laughs> watching the cricket or <laughs> going down to the library for a smoke <laughs> to read the papers. I mean, <laughs> sitting in a corner in the pub, you know, with a um, not when I'm with the pipe now, but anyway, um, <laughs> kicking the dog or whatever they do. <laughs> so, but it's a thought, I, I shall bear that in mind. Fantastic, yeah, it's Great. a very it was good idea. Lovely to speak to both of you. Thank you.